Hi everybody, this is Pat's Two Cents. I just came out from the shower. Um, <clears throat> so that's why I'm all bundled up. I'm all bundled up. Um, I threw a little face on so I wouldn't scare you guys. But <clears throat> my hair's still wet. I'm <laughs> just trying to get dry. I just went swimming. And what I was thinking about is, you know how you go swimming and you float on your back. You know how some people say, oh, I can't float because my feet sink or this sinks or whatever. Well, years ago, I couldn't, I couldn't float either. And I couldn't figure out why. And the people kept telling me, you have to relax. You have to lay on that water like it's a bed. I mean, from head to toe, every muscle must be relaxed. And when you are relaxed, everything just floats up to the surface. Well, I found that to be true. I, I mean, I've been able to swim because my father took me to swimming lessons, but um, I always had an issue with floating. And it's something about laying back and trusting that water to hold you up. You're not literally trusting the water, but you know that if you do certain things a certain way, the water has to hold you up. Well, that's the same way it is with trusting God. Sometimes the reason things seem to fall through for us and they don't seem to follow in the, in the passage we want them to go, we don't want them, they don't turn out as good as we want them to, is because sometimes we're not really trusting God. What we're doing is leaning to our own understanding we're working it in our own might, not in the power of his might. We're <clears throat> going along with the dictates of our flesh, our emotions, our shortcomings, our idiosyncrasies, our fears, our insecurities, everything that you can come up with. When we depend on us, things don't work out as well. That just happens to be a fact. Well, it's the same way with floating in water. When you float in water, one day I'm going to videotape. I'm going to have somebody videotape me floating in the water. When you float in the water, you can put your arms behind your head. You can cross your legs. I almost fell asleep. <laughs> I almost fell asleep one time floating in the water. It was so soothing. And you can't do that if you're afraid. You can't go to sleep and really rest. That's called entering in to God's rest. How can you enter into rest if you, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, you can't do it with fear dictating every move. So sometimes we have to ask God, Lord, teach me how to lay back, relax, and watch you, as the Bible says in Psalms 46, be still and know that I am God. Do you know he's God? Have you put him to the test? Hmm, think about that. God bless you. Pat's two cents with a second little thought. As I was swimming, the other thing I remember was one time when one of my family members got in the pool with me and I talked her into getting in the five foot and pool. She was five foot four, so it wasn't like she was gonna drown. And she jumped up on my shoulders and almost drowned me. This is what I wanna say. This is what the Lord brought to my mind when I thought of that. Don't drown in your fears and don't let your fears cause you to make someone else drown in your trials, in your situation, in your setback. Don't cause others to drown because you're drowning. Because what happens is a person who's drowning will almost drown the person they're clinging to. They're clinging to another person for dear life but they don't realize they're smothering them, they're grabbing them around their neck, they're almost pushing them down in the water, trying to stop themselves from drowning. And oftentimes when you hit the panic button like that, you cause others 
to drown, die, or falter in the situation. People get hurt. Don't panic when the water gets deep, when the problems and the troubles rise around you. Don't panic. Please don't do that. Too many people around you, not only yourself, but the others can get hurt as well. I don't think you want that. So ask God to help you not only rest in him, but lean on him. Depend. Seek him. Ask him to give you what you need to handle the situation his way. Because panic kills. Panic drowns. You don't want that. Seek God. When you're that afraid, at re number one, rebuke the fear in the name of Jesus. Number two, ask God to help you to strength, ask God to strengthen your faith. Then get in the word and ask God to lead you to scripture and he will talk to you. One time I had a woman threatened to take me to court and uh, the owner of the shop said don't worry about her she's a spoiled brat her mother pays for everything because her family has money and she said nine times out of ten she wants the money back so that she can go and buy herself some pretty things she said girl don't pay that any attention i'll talk to the family they go to my church okay cool but i was still afraid so i went home and talked to the lord and the Lord led me to scripture. He led me to Isaiah chapter 7. I had no clue what it said. And it said, <laughs> after it went through all the description of the scenery set up, it said, go and tell so-and-so. Fear not, neither be dismayed by the tail and the fire and all this. No, it shall not stand it shall not come to pass. At that point, pew, I hit the chill button and I was cool as a cucumber. Couldn't scare me after that. God secured my faith by that one word. It shall not come to stand. It shall not stand. It shall not come to pass. God is so good. If we just learn to turn to him, when our troubles rise, when the threats rise, when the shadows grow into giants, come on, God is able. He's got your back. He's got you.